Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new, welcome. Be sure to like, subscribe and comment to help us grow. So in today's video, I'll be doing a three part series on my rankings for every single piece of Star Wars media we've seen up to now. Obviously there will be a couple left out as I either haven't seen them or don't think they belong on this list, so they are solo. I haven't got around to seeing that as of yet. 2003 Clone Wars I don't think belongs on this list because it's a bit of a different sort of medium. Star Wars Resistance I watched a bit of it and just couldn't watch any more so it would be last if it was on this list. And I didn't include any Lego or holiday specials either because again they weren't I, I guess they wouldn't really fit on uh, this sort of serious list if, if that makes sense. What I have included is the nine Skywalker movies, Rogue One, Clone Wars, Rebels, Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Star Wars Visions, Obi-Wan Kenobi and The Bad Batch. In this first video I'll be going through my number 17 to 11, in the next video it will be 10 to 6 and then the top 5 in the final video. Starting off at number 17 we have The Last Jedi. Ironic. Whether you like this movie or not, it's fair to say it was probably the most controversial piece of Star Wars media to date. I remember watching it opening night and one of the viewers next to me said, What? What the fuck? But I heard a few people who loved it too behind me. Personally, I can't say I enjoyed this movie. The first time I saw this movie, I went out of the theatre thinking I watched the wrong one. Like they put in an alternate version or something to mess with the audiences. I completely convinced myself of this idea and went to see it again the next day. It's funny to say this out loud, but watching the second time and realizing it was the movie I had already seen, broke me. Now sure, I could do what most Last Jedi haters do and say they ruined Luke, his arc didn't make sense, his complete change in character and sudden fear also didn't make sense, and while I do agree with some of it, if not most of those points, those weren't the biggest issues of the film for me. I hated how they just set Finn aside into some meaningless journey and random romance that made absolutely no sense. Although The Force Awakens had built up the marketing as Finn being a Jedi, I understood Rey being a Jedi but I couldn't see why they didn't also build on Finn's character. I would have loved to see him be a Jedi, or if they didn't want that, just a more important character to the story. I truly believed they built it up like he had a connection with Rey, that they might be together in this film. Either one of these would have helped him a lot more and helped the film instead of the stupid stupid casino journey that we got in the film. The side characters like Holdo, and Rose, again had arcs which didn't make sense, making them unnecessarily important to a story which didn't need them. Even Leia was ruined in this film. They tried to give her more importance but instead made her do things and say things which didn't fulfill her character which had already been built up previous. I didn't mind the huge twist with him killing Snoke but it sort of defeated the purpose of building him up as a big bad guy then killing him off before we even knew who or what he was. Rey's character was okay in parts, but again, it was still hard to get on board with her arc. And finally, of course, I did not enjoy what they did to Luke. They made him into a laughing stock in this movie. Too many weird dad jokes and Marvel type comedy which doesn't fit into Star Wars at all. It still doesn't make sense to me how he was afraid of the darkness in Ben, but this same person never gave up hope on Darth Vader, the most evil person in the universe, excluding Papa Palpatine. The one thing I'll give this film is uniqueness. It definitely tried something new instead of regurgitating old stories with new characters, but it just wasn't the right way unfortunately with those characters for me. One huge positive in this film I'll say is that it's probably the most gorgeous looking Star Wars film alongside Rogue One. Brilliant cinematics and yes of course, that scene with all the Star Destroyers being destroyed is amazing. But overall, this film left me quite unsatisfied and put me in a dark place with Star Wars as there was no other content at the time and I questioned the whole planning on the sequel trilogy. 
Clearly, I should have asked whether there was a plan to begin with. I'm Peter, by the way. I'm Ray. Ray Skywalker. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man, then. At number 16, which you probably guessed, we have The Rise of Skywalker. For me, this and The Last Jedi are interchangeable. Both very poor movies. I genuinely have both tied last, but just put this slightly ahead because there were some cool Star Wars moments, be it completely ridiculous, but whatever. The Rise of Skywalker pulled a complete U-turn on what The Last Jedi set up, which is exactly what The Last Jedi did to The Force Awakens. It's as if this whole trilogy was just directors fighting between which way to go with the trilogy and a concluding with let's go in one direction then back into another and then back into another. This movie is definitely the one with the least sense. Basically everything in this movie is super rushed, they explain Snoke's existence in about one line, Palpatine returning with the line somehow he returned. Somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> as well as other stupid moments like horses in a space battle. Rey fight scenes with Kylo were extremely poor and were more disappointing because they had brilliant backdrops each time. I did like the comics callback with Luke training Leia as well as Luke reuniting in the force with his sister. Also I enjoyed the Kylo and his father scenes, it really showed his full circle from good to bad and back to good. It was a quite powerful scene and something that was needed to bring Kylo back to the light side. They didn't explain Palpatine's return well at all, and Rey beating him so easily was also quite off. It didn't make sense how she could lightsaber block that huge amount of force lightning he was producing. And yes, of course, the other stuff like that dumb Death Star puzzle scene, the whole idea of there being a huge fleet just sitting there waiting to go for years on end, I didn't mind the Finn stuff with the other abandoned stormtroopers, but honestly, this trilogy should have been planned out in a much better way. They should have written down the main plot points for each film and ensure the directors stay within those guidelines. Too much power was given to the directors and this was the end result. Interviews have come out by the actors from the trilogy that the directors had absolutely zero plan, they were just making it up as they went along which is scary to hear. It was definitely a rushed move by Disney to try grab money as soon as they purchased Lucasfilm, which I guess worked in a sense, but the steep downward margin of their profits as each sequel film went along should speak measures as to what people thought of the trilogy. I won't be watching this or The Last Jedi again, probably ever, unless I do another video on either of them. Now we get into a part of the list that has Star Wars TV shows and movies that I didn't hate but didn't love either. At number 15 we have The Bad Batch. Going into The Bad Batch, I had a lot of hype because it was a Clone Wars sequel in a sense and that series was unarguably one of the best Star Wars pieces of media ever made. Unfortunately, The Bad Batch did not live up to the expectation for me and many fans. Don't get me wrong, there were some episodes that I loved, like the opening episode was a masterpiece, all the episodes with Crosshair or Rex were very good, as well as the penultimate episode being stunning and pushed great emotion onto viewers seeing Kamino getting destroyed. But there were also a lot of episodes with the Bad Batch doing pointless side missions for the most annoying character in this show, Sid. Every time I saw Sid show up, I knew this was going to be another random useless mission episode and the problem was that there was a lot of them in 16 episodes. I would have loved to see them delve more into Crosshair's betrayal, the regular clones coming to the realization of what they had done, the Empire gaining control over peaceful parts of the galaxy. I genuinely loved the arc going with Captain Hauser, seeing his reflection on his actions and his ultimate choice to go against the order he had followed up to that point. Crosshair's character was a very interesting one, as he was sort of like an outsider which was ironic in a group of outsiders. He struggled to fit in with the group and as a result found an identity working for the Empire. By the end of the series, Crosshair comes to the realization that his place isn't with the Empire, but he is still unsure of where his place truly is 
as he decides against rejoining the Bad Batch. Somehow I haven't spoken about Omega yet, I know the divide surrounding her character. Some loved her, some didn't, and to be honest it's a reaction I expected as people do sometimes struggle with the kid characters in Star Wars, as they can be annoying. But that's the whole point, they're children, they haven't figured out who they are or who they want to be, and Omega is a prime example of this. I enjoy her character throughout the series, and she was a true symbol for where the Bad Batch as a whole were in the story. Confused, not knowing whether to belong, starting to belong, and eventually becoming family. In a way, she's quite the polar opposite of Crosshair. As she grew more with the Bad Batch, he grew to dislike them more and more. As she found her place in their family, he questioned his entire purpose in life. All in all, the Bad Batch for me was quite a hit and miss show, but I did love the characters, some of the stories, seeing some nice cameos, and the animation as per usual was stunning. Just look at this shot. In 14th place, I have Star Wars Visions. I debated with myself long and hard as to whether this would be above the Bad Batch or below, but I ended up going with this as the better of the two. The reason for this is I feel the overall quality of Visions was better, as I thoroughly enjoyed nearly every episode with some standouts, while Bad Batch had a lot more episodes which missed the mark. I didn't know what to think towards the concept of anime Star Wars, but after seeing Visions, I'm keen to see more. Obviously the first episode was a big standout, the artwork form, the anime, Star Wars lore, an intriguing but mysterious character, and of course, red lightsabers. I also enjoyed the one where the master takes his padawan to fight a very old Dark Force user. They pushed through the perils to beat him, with the moral of the story being, no matter who you are and how powerful you were, time always catches up to you. There were some quite unique anime styles used in certain episodes too, and I loved most of them. I guess the only issue for me is that it was probably a bit too short, and since all were set in different scenarios, there was no overall connection between the stories. But I completely understand that they did this to see what the audience reaction would be like, and the fact that they've renewed it for season 2 tells me that others not only were intrigued, but liked the idea of Star Wars anime. At number 13, we have The Book of Boba Fett. Now let me just get this out of the way early. Without the two Mandalorian episodes, this series would be under the Bad Batch and Visions. This series is a strange one to say the least, because it's basically two series in one. Was I looking forward to a Boba Fett show? Very much so. But I did have a slight worry whether Disney would do right by his character and give us his savageness while also developing his character to a place we hadn't seen. What we got was a strong start, despicable middle, perfect two episodes without Boba, then a lackluster finale. Let's start at the beginning. I loved the first two episodes of this show. They went into detail how Boba escaped the Sarlacc pit, where he went from there with interesting interactions with the Tuscans. They gave us a whole new perspective on the Tuscans. They partially humanized the Tuscans as simply an indigenous people who are being taken away from their sacred land. They also distinguish that clans of Tuscans are different, similar to how people are different. So the ones that killed Shmi Skywalker were part of a more aggressive clan. I love the idea of Boba being compared to that of a foreigner trying to learn the way of the people of the land. He starts off as a prisoner, but he slowly starts to understand how the Tuscans operate, and how they work with the land, not against it. He slowly earns their trust, and eventually becomes one of them. It's quite a satisfying moment. In particular, the moments of him making his weapon, and getting his Tuscan cape. The soundtrack throughout the first two episodes was beautiful, unique, yet still with a Star Wars feel. What came next was a really poor two episodes. And no, that stupidly constructed chase scene wasn't the only reason. I hated the whole idea of that goofy looking young youth gang with their oddly colourful bikes. 
They clearly didn't belong to Tatooine or to the series. The introduction of the Huts into the series to find out they aren't even the main bad guy was another stupid move. Then they bring in Black Kersantan and nerf him to bits. I get that there is a major underlying theme in all of movies today that everyone has a bit of humanity in them, no matter how far gone they are. I mean, that's the whole premise behind Anakin returning to the light side of the force. But, just because everyone has a bit of humanity in them, doesn't mean everyone is good. And I'm finding that as a reoccurring theme throughout Hollywood, not just Star Wars, that they are turning bad guys into good guys with a little bit of bad in them. Kersantan should have ripped those kids to shreds, and why is he all happy and cheery by the end? That's not Black Kersantan. Why is Boba so nice to those kids as well? They are basically being dickheads to him, and he offers them jobs. It makes zero sense. Fast forwarding past those two horrid episodes, and we get the two best episodes of the series by a long way, and some of the best Star Wars media ever seen. The fifth episode is all about the Mandalorian, where he's been since season 2 of his show and what he's doing now. From the get go, he's given an epic entrance, slicing people, chopping heads off and collecting bounties. It's ironic, but he's become exactly what many people expected Boba to be. This episode brought back the brilliant music associated with Mando, as well as the stunning CGI. Yes, I'm talking about that halo shaped planet which is definitely something I want to see more of in Star Wars. Unique settings. But that's a video for another time. The whole episode is excellently made, but it did feel as if this episode was in the wrong show. I get that we had to catch up with Mando, but the fact that this whole episode and the six episodes don't have Boba in them shows that the writers were sort of lost on where to go with the story, so they filled it up with characters we all love. Episode 6 went to infinity and beyond. It was honestly one of my favourite bits of Star Wars media ever. The whole mirroring of Luke training Grogu with Yoda training Luke. The slight look at where Grogu was during Order 66. The Ahsoka cameo we didn't know we needed. The scene where Ahsoka talks to Luke and mentions Anakin. Mando having his father bond stretched to its limits. Yoda's lightsaber being brought back into the canon when it was thought to be burned in the comics. And finally, the introduction of Cad Bane into live action. Yes, all of this happened in one Dave Filoni run episode. You could just see the Star Wars love through the screen, the care taken in each scene with each of these beloved characters. An almost perfect episode in my opinion. Then we got the finale. Mediocre at best. I don't think the Pikes was the best choice of bad guy. The Pikes are cool when they are henchmen, but they aren't cool when they're the main bad character. And it's not just that. In the series, they didn't really build them up, they just put them there and expected the audience to know that they are the villains. It was quite poor, then they brought in Cad Bane only to kill him off in a whimsical manner. A disappointing end for such a legendary bounty hunter. Rest in peace Cad Bane. And yes, I know there are rumours that he might still be alive, but for now we'll say he's dead. The whole battle was extremely low scale, with people just running around the city from the droids. It felt a lot more like a town skirmish than a huge battle that they were playing it out to be. Quite a poor season finale after an amazing couple of episodes. All in all, an amazing, mediocre and poor show all in one puts it at 13th on my list. Coming in at number 12 is The Phantom Menace. This one is an interesting placement for me. Don't get me wrong, I loved the prequels, as you'll see by my placement of the other two, but this one just isn't as good for me. I think it would have been much better off being more Anakin focused, especially since that is why the prequels are there, to explain the story of how Anakin Skywalker fell from the light side. I didn't hate this movie by any means. I loved the seeds of Palpatine in there. Of course the whole scene between Maul, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. The music was the start of brilliance which only got better from John Williams as the prequels went along. The setup of the Jedi Temple and being introduced to the Masters. Remember, before this, 
We only had Luke as an alive Jedi, but this was a very different time. The Jedi ruled the galaxy, and it was definitely cool to see that. The boy Anakin stuff with Padme was memeable and quite funny at times. Anakin, a player at such a young age. Now, this film as a whole was quite boring, mainly due to the politics. I'm definitely not opposed to good politics in cinema, including Star Wars. Politics as we know plays a major role in multiple arcs through the Clone Wars, which I loved every moment of. But the politics here just didn't indulge me enough. I was left feeling bored. The journey itself is okay, but there are a lot of slow moments in this film. The mega finale masterpiece boosts it up, but overall, an okay film. An okay setup, but I definitely think we should have had Anakin at an older age to entrench in his character study more. Rounding out my part 1 of 3 rankings and coming in at 11th place is The Force Awakens. I don't know why there's a vibe around the social media circuit that everyone hated this movie. It's clearly the most successful and overall best rated of the sequel movies. I genuinely enjoyed this movie. It's my most rewatched sequel by a long way. I love the introduction of Kylo Ren. That scene of him stopping the laser bullet with the Force was a heck of an entrance. I like that he wasn't Vader. He was much younger, much more confused, and not sure about who he is, and which side of the Force he lies on. He battles with himself throughout the movie, but in particular when he kills his father Han Solo, which I thought was a brilliantly created scene. The fact that the light is on them both when he's talking, but then the light fades away, and he slices him down after saying, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. This statement in itself can be taken two ways. Is he talking about the strength needed to resist the dark side and come back to the light? Or the strength to kill his father, end his past, and join the dark side? I didn't really like the bait and switch with Finn and Rey, but had it been executed well in the consecutive films, that could have been forgiven. But that didn't end so well as we know. Of course, in terms of originality, it definitely lacked. It was just a smash together of the previous films, mostly A New Hope. I mean, come on, how many times can you make a Death Star, and how many times can you have dodgy engineering which can blow it up so easily? They ought to fire the engineers who build the damn thing. I like the subtle callbacks, the Yoda Obi-Wan voice cameos, and the ending, which was quite literally a cliffhanger. I definitely did want Luke, Leia and Han to get a final moment together before any of them were killed off, but again, I didn't mind the way they set up the story. It was intriguing. Why on earth had Luke Skywalker hidden all these years? Did he get a message from a force ghost? Was he possibly settled down with Mara Jade? What happened to his Jedi temple? There's no way he's just sitting in hiding. I guess we'll never get a good reason, but it is what it is. A decent start to the sequel trilogy which only went downhill from there. So that's my part 1 of 3 ranking of all Star Wars media up to now. Let me know in the comments below what your list is. Give me some reasons as well why you have certain things in certain positions. Of course I want to reiterate that this is my own personal opinion so don't flag me in the comments below. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions as well on this whole subject matter. Be sure to keep an eye out for my part 2 and part 3 of this list. In part 2 I will be doing ranking 6 to 10 and in part 3 I will be doing 1 to 5 and then I may do a big compilation of all 3 in one video. Keep a look out for those and until next time, the force will be with you. Always.